Hi everyone! Welcome to Psychic Creations History Series. We are on part two with Buffalo Bill Cody. It's well, nice to meet you again. <laughs> glad to be back. Glad I'm still here. Yes, yes. If I, I can, I, I'd like to tell you some of the things uh, of when I was a youth, some of my experiences. Um, one of the things, uh, Ed, you had mentioned in one of the introductions is that I was a uh, gold prospector. Yes. And I did. Uh, I was young. I was about 13. I went to Colorado on my own with a friend. And uh, the big gold fields and the big gold strikes were happening. That was the place to go. So we headed out there without a clue. Neither of us knew geology. <laughs> I'm not even sure we knew what gold looked like from in the ground. <laughs> Uh, or how it was mined, but we got there and we felt all of the uh, the good claims were already taken and how to prospect. We're 13 years old, we're worried about eating, uh, so <laughs> prospecting was not big for us. We did a few odd jobs to get enough money, we had all our truck with us, all our supplies, we loaded them up and we were going to take the rivers back to Kansas. Okay. Because horses cost money. <laughs> okay. Well, we didn't get all that far, and we got tumbled, and we lost all our supplies Aww. and everything. So, by hook or crook and whatever, we did manage to get back to Kansas. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so that was an experience. And then I did try trapping with a friend, and we were successful. And uh, the second hunt we went on, we had quite a load. We had marten, we had deer, we had beaver, which... Even though the heyday of the beaver was gone, there was still a demand for beaver because it's a good, fine fur. So we had a low wagon load. We, we had quite a bit of stuff to go back. And at our age, we were doing really well. Well, I broke my leg. I took a tumble, broke my leg. And uh, it was winter time. My partner and I, we found a, a small cave along a river. Uh, we hollowed it out more, put our supplies and everything in there, and he made me as comfortable as possible and brought firewood up to the front of the cave entrance for me. And he took off, and it was about, I think about 150, maybe 200 miles to the nearest settlement to try and find somebody that could come back and treat my leg. Because you're not going very far on a broken leg out there. And it's extremely painful to ride in a wagon where there's no roads and over rocks you can't see because and we were having difficulty traveling in the snow anyhow Oh goodness. so my partner took off with the only animal we had left the other one had succumbed uh, to the weather and hard use and uh, I'm pretty cozy in my cave I thought I can yeah. hang in there as long as need be well a few days out lo and behold who comes by but a Sioux hunting party and old Red Cloud himself, which I knew uh, from back in the day when my father moved us from Iowa down to Kansas, he, 10 miles outside the Kickapoo Indian Agency, he got a license to trade with the Indians. And from as far north as Nebraska and stuff, the uh, Sioux would come down to that agency and trade sometimes. But anyhow, I knew who Red Cloud was. And... Uh, he and these warriors came in, and I thought, boy, I'm in for it. I'm, done. I'm a goner, so to speak. I'm going under. And uh, they all saw the predicament I was in, uh, even though I was uh, large for my age. I was uh, still, they could tell, a youth. I wasn't of any harm to them, and they knew I had a broken leg. Well, they helped themselves to my provisions. They ate everything I had. You know, they're on a hunting expedition, but they didn't want to cart my truck, white man's food with them. That, was, that wasn't going to happen. So they took all my food, took all my weapons, took the traps, everything I had of value, left me with uh, some water, and uh, they took off. Now, I think it was still about a week or so before my partner showed up with help. He made darn good time in that kind of weather there and back and so I survived I'm here yes, you uh, are. but that was quite the experience uh, and I tried to make it known I knew a little bit of sign language because growing up near an Indian reservation or it wasn't a reservation but there, it was called an agency at that time okay mm -hmm. and it was their uh, 
ancestral home, if you will. So okay. they were allowed to be there, and uh, you had to have a license to trade with them. But I, some of my earliest playmates were these young Indian boys, and oh. I learned to shoot bow and arrow, and learned how to skin rabbits and small game, and uh, learned some sign language, and that helped me later on, because uh, throughout the Northern Plains and the dissimilar tribes, uh, if they had language problems, they always resorted to sign language. So oh. that helped me, and yeah. uh, even uh, in later years, uh, some of the old uh, guys and myself would get together after a performance, and just nice. for to keep the old days alive, we would do our signing. And, oh, uh, nice! A matter of fact, uh, they filmed a, me and uh, one of my uh, performers one time. Uh, just a few years back, mm -hmm. uh, they filmed us signing to each other. Is that right? Right. Oh. So there is a record of uh, me doing sign language. Oh. That Bell character and coming Edison, I should say Edison. He, his uh, motion picture, moving picture course, he's starting to cut into my uh, oh. Wild West oh. with um, moving pictures, but. Uh, what yeah. a marvelous thing it is. Yes, it is. It is a, tr a true marvel, mm -hmm. true marvel. So uh, those are some of my experiences. I, I had a bad one. Uh, I was about uh, five years old. Papa was gone, and my older brother, Sam, uh, and my mom, Mama, had said, don't ride Papa's horse. Don't do that. So he got up on Papa's horse, and I had the other plug, if you will, uh, and we went trotting down the lane, and uh, there were some kids from our school, and whether Sam uh, was reining up to uh, say hello or something spooked Papa's horse while the horse reared and rolled over Sam. And uh, he didn't linger long. They took him to the nearest house, and uh, by the time they went and got Mama, he was already gone. So there was that experience of watching my younger brother, or younger, my older brother pass. Oh. And uh, my younger brother, when I was off to war, he died during the war. Oh. Uh, back at home, he had been sickly and uh, he passed. But uh, I still had a brood full of older sisters that I oh. <laughs> had to care for, and I did. Sure. And, uh, mm -hmm. So there was always that good thing about that. And uh, I, I could tell you, I'd probably go on for days telling you about what it was like <laughs> to perform on stage. I did mm -hmm. perform in Virginia City, but it was the Maguires yes. at that time. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I came back in later years, and I had been to the Piper, but not as a performer. Oh. Sometimes I might be invited up on the stage because I was recognized and in yeah. town. Because oh. mm -hmm. uh, I would come to Ely here in Nevada yes. to buy horses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, Texas horses were fine and dandy, but if you wanted a good horse with good bottom and you wanted a mountain horse, oh, their sure. lungs were better. Yes. Uh, oh. Their endurance is better. Good and point. Uh, so uh, for running and uh, for performing and speed, uh, I like the Nevada horses. And sure. I would go to Ely, sometimes Elko, mm -hmm. to uh -huh. uh, purchase horses from the, uh, the ranchers to be incorporated in my Wild West. Oh, interesting. So that's my connection yeah. to Nevada. Sure. It's a great place. It is. Uh, I enjoy the scenery. Uh, I'm pretty much a high prairie kind of guy. Mm -hmm. right. I like my trees about five, six miles apart. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sure, okay. So, uh, but uh, such a beautiful country. And uh, my last ranch that I purchased was just outside of the newly established uh, Yellowstone National Park that my friend and acquaintance uh, Theodore Roosevelt set up. I have the TR Ranch, which is just on the eastern side, the, the entrance or exit, depending, uh, and that's up in the trees, and I've learned to love the piney scent. And, uh, mm -hmm. I had always thought I was going to retire to Scouts Rest Ranch there in North Platte, Nebraska, and I had been sending Louisa money to acquire adjoining properties and build on it. I don't know what she did with all that money, but she did wear some mighty fine clothes. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, but anyhow, and she was afraid that I was going to squander all our money. Oh, but okay. uh, I did acquire the ranch in uh, Wyoming, and I was beginning to believe that would be my retirement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
So was it? No, ma'am. No, it wasn't. Okay. No, I always had to continue working, even though I was. Oh. Uh, I'm getting tireder and tireder. Mm, sure. Uh, I have to keep performing and. Uh, some bad business uh, contracts that I made with others mm -hmm. to support the Wild West, mm -hmm. they ended up controlling me. And uh, Barnum and, uh, no, the Floto mm -hmm. okay. Circus. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I forget the other gentleman's name, but it was this, it's Bell or Sells, Sells Floto, I think it is, uh, mm -hmm. Circus. I became just a figurehead or a shadow of myself. But the crowd still loved me, and they remembered me and the young boys. Oh, yeah. One time in New Jersey, or New York, I went, and uh, all the newsies, all the little newsboys that sold newspapers for a living, and uh, I said, well, you know, you boys here, you come, you come see my show, it's free. Nice. About 5,000 of these boys <laughs> showed up. <laughs> and so we had, and I asked, the while and the troop would they put on help me put on a performance for these boys and they did and it was great it was fantastic Aww. uh and they weren't paid for it because mm -hmm. this was out of the ordinary and it was an extra performance and just for the newsies isn't that nice of you uh early on and they say the learning curve of doing things you know the very very first experiment i tried with buffalo in new york it doesn't work uh, you got to have them corralled, and you have to have more riders and horses. Uh, and I paid a few bills for that. But we were in New Jersey, and we were doing our shooting uh, performances. Well, midway through the performance, we have the uh, town chief of police coming, and our shots were going out of the park across the river and shooting out the windows in a greenhouse. Oh, no! So we, we developed a smaller... Uh, more like a shotgun shell, you know, in the 44s, 45s, you know, just a little bit of powder and just a little bit of uh, chilled lead shot so it wouldn't travel very far. Right. Oh. We learned. <laughs> you learned. A costly lesson, but yes. you learned. <laughs> Luckily, no one was hurt. Oh, you have had so many wonderful experiences. I've been very blessed and very fortunate and oftentimes in the right place at the right time. Sure, it sounds like that. And I've had help. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of help doing what I do. And I would rather accumulate and take care of friends and family than money. Isn't that a wonderful attitude to have about life? Nice. All right, now viewers, I think what I would like to do is ask Chuck Baldauskas to talk to us about how he was inspired to portray Buffalo Bill Cody. Uh, when was it that you became interested in history? Well, history and me go way back. Mm -hmm. uh, even as the, the youngest memories I have, my mother and father grew up and uh, lived a long time in Wyoming, Pennsylvania. So we'd always hear of Queen Esther, the Indian princess, who was actually in our hometown too. Oh, okay. But uh, their tribe is pushed back further and further by white uh, settlements. But anyhow, they would always, my mother was fascinated, I think a little bit with the Indian history of her hometown. So when we'd go back there, you know, I'm always looking the ground, you know, uh, other kids are looking for lumps of coal. I'm looking for Indian arrowheads. Never found any. But mother always had stories and the history. And there was about uh, 200 settlers that were killed in the Wyoming Valley during the Revolutionary War. Uh, British officers uh, with a few troops, but mostly uh, several hundred Iroquois warriors, attacked the town of Wyoming. And uh, there was a big battle that raged not in the normal sense of battle lines and stuff, but isolated cabins and the militia tried to make a stand here and there and hold them off so the women and children that could could get away. But about 200 some people were slaughtered and after about a year, it took about a year for people to get back there because now this is all hostile Indian territory. Uh, they gathered up the bones that they could find and there's a monument there that was just about 500 feet from my aunt's house, where they Ooh. they built this cairn. It's it's actually a 
a granite tomb, if you will, with okay. a spire mm -hmm. on top. And the bones were interred in there and all the names of the people that they can, through research, et cetera, mm -hmm. that they knew died because, you know, you come back a year later, the animals and weather sure. and stuff, the bodies oh. weren't recognizable unless they had certain articles of clothing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So that, that really intrigued me. And there were two Civil War cannons out there, which that was the biggest thing in my life, you know, even with all the Westerns on TV and yeah, we played uh, Wild Bill, we played Buffalo Bill, maybe. I don't remember playing Buffalo Bill, but uh, sure. Billy the Kid was big, oh, you know, sure. Range Rider, mm -hmm. uh, those type of shows, Cheyenne. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the gunfighter thing never appealed to me that much. I liked all that, I watched all of them, uh, but I liked the, uh, the Army, I liked the Scouts. That, okay. that always appealed mm -hmm. to me, which Hey, Buffalo Bill, come right. on. <laughs> so um, I, I was doing that, and the Civil War was my biggest thing. For a short time after I moved here to Nevada, I had been getting more and more interested in the mountain man. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. The idea that these guys could live out on their own without support of civilization and running to the local general store for what they needed, they it, it was fascinating to me. Well. I had retired just recently from the state of Nevada. Mm -hmm. oh. And I had a friend that was visiting from back east and wanted to go to Virginia City. So here we go. I'm wearing shorts. I had short hair parted in the middle. A uh, mustache that went to a, a beard. It wasn't a point or anything, just face whiskers, you know, the style. I'm wearing shorts, a Hawaiian shirt, sandals, and I'm in the visitor center talking with my friend. and. Uh, there was a gentleman there, all dressed in black and everything, and thought, well, you know, maybe, because I was interested in getting into cowboy action shooting. Oh, wow. Because I had shot in competition in the service, you know, pistols oh. and stuff. Uh -huh. So I thought, you know, Mary wanted to make dolls, my wife Mary. Uh, she made dolls, and uh, I wanted to do uh, cowboy action shooting, and we would organize our routes along wherever her craft fairs were, and the end of trail uh, shootouts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, single action shooter society. Well, anyhow, we're in there and I saw this gentleman, he's carrying guns, uh, this gentleman in black, uh, who come to be, I find out his name is Doc Durden. Oh, I know him So well. Doc is there and he's talking with me. He says, oh, you don't want to do that. And now, he's a big guy. If, if you're familiar with him, he's bigger than I am. He's now in my face. I mean, he's invading my space. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going, what is this guy? <laughs> I don't know what his persuasion is, but he's, he's here and he, yeah. he's looking at me and he says, I see Buffalo Bill. Oh. And I, here I'm ready to talk to him about cowboy action shooting and I wanted to be uh, Waco Johnny Dean from Winchester 73, Dan Duryea's character. I always thought he was, if I was going to be a cowboy, it was going to be him. Okay. And uh, so I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking about it. I go home, and I told Mary what had happened, and so I, I started researching, and I did, he says, you ought to, the, the doc says, you got to do Buffalo Bill. You look like him. And I couldn't see it. Didn't understand it. And growing up in the 60s, all of our Heroes and history is bunk. It's not true. Oh, he's just an alcoholic. That's all I knew. He was a showman and he was an alcoholic. Well, I started doing research and it took six, six to eight months before I decided, when I found out he won the Medal of Honor, you can't buy one of those. So uh, he became the real deal. I started digging into it more deeply and trying to understand the man and what motivated him, what caused him to be Buffalo Bill. Mm -hmm. okay. And there was no cause. It, it, it was his natural evolution, and it, it intrigued me, and then I decided to do it. Oh, yay! Because, <laughs> you know, I'm 62 years old at the time, and I'm going, I'm not a gunfighter. I'd be dead if I was a gunfighter. <laughs> Um, at this age, they, and that's probably another reason it was a good thing to pick Buffalo Bill because he had a long career. Yes. Uh, a lot of these guys died terribly. Uh, so um, I just thought, 
this is, this, I got to do this. And I committed to it. And uh, I've never stopped doing the research on him. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. I've read his autobiography. He wrote two autobiographies, Buffalo Bill. Did. Oh, he did. Okay. So I, I read uh, both of them uh, numerous times, and I go back to certain things. I've got a card index. I write sure. notes. and. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So uh, that's what motivated me to get into Buffalo Bill. I, I remember reading how he got his name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and that stuck with me for some reason. But I never much thought of Buffalo Bill and the shows, the one with uh, Charlton Heston and others. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a 35-year-old man playing a 14-year-old boy riding for the Pony Express. And <laughs> I just didn't, just didn't understand fit. that yeah. at all. Uh, <laughs> and then the guy who played Buffalo Bill with uh, Gary Cooper playing Wild Bill Hickok. Uh -oh, that okay. was, uh, that one even though it wasn't necessarily historically accurate, it was good entertainment. Oh, okay. And done in a really nice style. Right. So, <laughs> so doing Buffalo Bill, it, it, it's been an evolutionary process even after I jumped into doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, it just, it, I wouldn't say it came easily, but the more I studied, the more I liked, and uh, I, I, I just, I'm fascinated with them, mm -hmm. and I hope that what I do I'm not bringing any dishonor to the man's name or image. Mm -hmm. I so, don't think so. Oh, I think he would be. I very... think it try. It makes me better mm -hmm. in sure. ways. Uh, of course, I'm sure my wife may not agree with everything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I could ask you a question, I like yeah. to ask this of my guests on my history series. Do you, through your research and through finding your outfits and and your performances, do you feel Buffalo Bill? spirit around you, <laughs> guiding you? That's a toughie. Um, even though I've had a few experiences in my life that could be considered paranormal, or, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the more I study Buffalo, and it, it's odd, that, that when I get involved in history, I read, and, and then like he died, uh, Buffalo Bill died in 1917. Okay. My mm -hmm. mother was born in 1914, so I feel Oh man, they're just as close to the man. Uh -huh. And uh, by doing Buffalo Bill and the people that I've met, and I've got more cousins than I can shake a stick at. <laughs> my aunt said somehow we're, re my uncle said we're re like, you know, I've got, you know, we're cousins. I don't know how, but we're cousins. You know? <laughs> okay, sure. Fantastic. I'm loving it. You know, did Aunt, aunt Ruth send some chocolate chip cookies? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it's it's odd. Uh, the more I study them, you know, I, I get this mental picture when I do something. Okay. Especially uh, when I'm up in Virginia City and I get just a little out of character and carried away with something. I, I get this mental image of him with a disproving look. No words, no, uh, no overt yeah. gestures, <laughs> just a... Oh. Or if I do something right, it's sort of a... And it's a mental picture. Sure. But what uh, fascinates me about Buffalo Bill and doing this and getting this approbation, if you will, maybe mentally that I've put in there by reading and studying him, mm -hmm. it's the parallels in our lives. Oh, really? Uh, some of the easiest, quickest things that come to mind is we both got married at 20. Uh, his wife was a little older and he was. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife's just months older than me, but again, the older woman mm -hmm. factor. Mm -hmm. um, Buffalo Bill became seriously ill with kidney failure, mm -hmm. and that's what he passed away from. A year ago, I had double kidney failure. Now, with modern science, mm -hmm. I have survived, sure. whereas they didn't know what to do for Buffalo Bill. Right. The last three or four years of his life were just misery. And he wanted yeah. to retire. He was always tired. And I understand that because when my kidneys shut down or were shutting down, I didn't know what was going on. All I had was that malaise and not wanting to do anything, not, no energy to do it, and uh, lack of appetite. And I went to a dentist and passed out, and I had to call my wife to come pick me up. Uh, and that's when they determined I had kidney failure. And 
So, boy, that was, um, and I have that in common with Buffalo Bill, other than the fact, and I'm not going to say I'm dying in January of my 70th year. Right, okay. But it <laughs> seems like right now things are going really close. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. oh, goodness. All right. Well, uh, let's see here. Where do you do your venues? Uh, where do you perform? Buffalo? Anybody who wants me or needs me, I'm available. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. I've been in two movies. I've been on a TV show, done a commercial for the state of Nevada with others. It was an ensemble oh. thing okay. and uh, performed at one of the governor's things for the youth. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club, I think it was the Ooh. reason for the, the meal, the dinner up in Reno. Mm -hmm. uh, with Doc Durden, uh, he invited me to perform up in Reno with him. Nice. And uh, he's been with me at uh, the Dangberg Ranch. We've done the Buffalo Bills Wild West, and he co hosts it yes. and performs. And uh, I go to Genoa quite a bit. I've been in parades, the Nevada Day Parade, all the mm -hmm. Virginia City parades. Nice. And uh, pretty much anybody who wants, wants to hear about Buffalo Bill, mm -hmm. I'm ready to tell them. You are. Whether they want to know it or not. Oh, how fun. Well, I'll tell you, we sure have enjoyed Buffalo Bill, Cody, and also Chuck. Well, thank you very much. It was a real pleasure to be here. Well, thank uh, you. You're doing a great thing and helping get uh, people's characters and names out there, and we appreciate you. Oh, just one more question. Could you give our viewers contact information where they could get a hold of you um, to uh, come teach or come perform? Well, if I can give my phone number, yeah, I if, can give yeah. a home phone number, mm -hmm. which is 775-265-2315. And we don't always monitor the messages, but uh, leave a message, and when we get to it, we will get back to you. Nice. And I have a Facebook page, The Honorable buffalo bill of virginia city and b and a facebook page chuck baldowskis at yeah on that, facebook awesome thank you so much for being on our show thank you for having part me. one and part two <laughs> all right nice all right well thank you very much for watching psychic creations history series and if you would like to be a guest on my show you can get a hold of me at my website, which is www.sandypsychicstones.com or at my email address, which is admin at sandypsychicstones.com. Thank you all for watching Psychic Creation History Series. And please remember, history created who we are today. Amen. Thank you.